Today we're going to Whittier through the long one-lane tunnel. We're going to be boarding the Klondike Express for the 26th Glacier Tour, our last cruise in Alaska. Then we're going to Valdez, our final major point of interest in the 49th state. Join us as we start winding down this epic adventure. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. It is our last morning in Homer, which has been one of the best weather we've had in southern Alaska. We stayed at the KOA, a little pricey, but it is nice and well located. And these views, well, these views I'm sure would have cost a little more. We've got scrambled eggs with leftover smoked salmon from yesterday. Hmm, smoked salmon, red onions and scrambled eggs. That smoked salmon, by the way, was to die for. And now, off we go. We're gonna go into town really quick because there's a safe way here. And I don't think there's one in Whittier. And we're running low on certain items. This is called Anchor Point the furthest west point on the US highway system. Basically, the westernmost point in the Americas that you can drive to. I sense a missed opportunity here because we could have stopped and at the very least, take a picture. I mean, there's gotta be a sign somewhere. All of this is familiar territory since we drove on this road heading south just a few days ago. It is getting a little cloudier as we drive through Soldatna. And here's where we're gonna take a more easterly route. Even if a little cloudy, it is still beautiful. And much better than a few days ago when we had pouring rain almost the whole way. Now driving along the Kenai River. And this is called Cooper Landing. There are several outfitters that will take you fishing on the river. Mm, one of these days. Now crossing Kenai Lake, which happens to be the headwaters of the Kenai River. Let's take a break. This is the very spot we stopped at on the way to Kenai. A little more crowded today and with much better weather. In fact, I'm gonna fly the drone. This is called Turn Lake, at the junction of the Sterling and Seward Highways. From here we're gonna take the Seward Highway north, and then we'll make the detour towards Whittier. It is certainly great to be able to see things from this higher perspective. I can't believe I didn't see this waterfall while I was flying. I could have flown closer to it. Oh well, we'll see it from here.
gorgeous. Porter's Lake it is called. Here we are, arriving at the Whittier Tunnel. Normally $13 for passenger vehicles, $22 for us towing Mini Tini 4. And they have seasonal passes and discounts for multi-ticket books. They tell you which lane to get on and the whole thing runs on a schedule. Eastbound traffic goes on the half hour, westbound goes at the top of the hour with variations to accommodate for the train sometimes, which also uses the same one-lane tunnel. Yep. We're about to go under that huge mountain. There's no other way to put it. It is a white knuckle drive, especially because sometimes one of your tires will go on top of the railroad track and Starship's lane keep assist keeps getting confused with it. And it keeps trying to stir, trying to do what it thinks is right. I mean, eventually I turned it off, but it was a very long two and a half miles. We have too much technology sometimes. Here we are, Whittier. And there's a campground in town that might be walking distance to the marina and the cruise terminal. So we're going to try that one first. I can see the iconic inn at Whittier, there on the left, which is currently closed for renovations. There is an abandoned building straight ahead that used to be a military base. And then the tall building on the right, also formerly a military installation, that's where most of the town lives. And they have all the services in there, so if the weather is bad, you don't have to go out. The campground should be past the boat parking area. By the way, the road is in pretty bad condition. Yep, this is it, Creekside Campground. And they even have porta potties. Let's see what the other side looks like. It is fairly wooded, which is always a concern when you want to use Starlink for internet. There's a turnaround, and someone decided to park right at the turnaround. Let me tell you, common sense is not so common sometimes. We're going to try the Whittier Bay Campground, which might be better. Not walking distance, so we might have to unhitch, but we were probably going to do that anyway. We're coming back here tomorrow to get on a boat. This is it. Yes, I think this is going to work out. Well, this is where we're staying in Whittier, Alaska. Not bad. Not bad at all. We almost have an ocean view. Almost. We're surrounded by little waterfalls, some of them not so little. Well, yeah, this is what we're gonna call it. I'm glad we decided to stay here, and not in that other campground in town. I mean, both uh, primitive, both at $20 a night. This one you can book it with an app, actually. And, uh, and we are surrounded by, by waterfalls and mountains. I mean, the only advantage to the other one would have been walking distance to the port, but we don't hitch and I'm just gonna drive into town. Uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit, see the view of Whittier, and then we're gonna call it a night. Maybe I'll cook some dinner. The other advantage of the Creekside campground may have been privacy, but really, we don't mind. 
going to melt some butter and uh, yeah, we're not exactly level here. We have some Alaskan sausage links with reindeer meat added. Let's chop an onion, crush and peel some garlic, salt, pepper, mince the garlic, a little bit of vino seco cooking wine, move it around, let it evaporate, and we're done. Bon appétit! Here we have a pretty good view of Whittier from the beach. We can see the abandoned building and our boat, the one we're taking tomorrow. It probably just arrived from today's cruise. There's the train and let's get a closer look. I'm really hoping for good weather, clear skies, no rain for tomorrow, because we're really looking forward to this cruise, the 26 Glacier Cruise. Hmm, I wonder what that is, what they're doing there. I had no idea the scenery here in Whittier was going to be this great. But then again, I've pretty much said the same thing, at least to myself, about almost every place we've been to in Alaska. Except Barrow, perhaps. looks a lot clearer compared to yesterday. A lot windier too. Well, even though we're gonna eat on the boat in about, what, two or three hours? <laughs> three hours probably. We're really hungry, so we got more of that uh, reindeer sausage and everything cooked in butter is better, right? So, bon appetit! This is the most, most important meal of the day. And as you probably know, we haven't really been embracing the, the low-carb uh, lifestyle lately, <laughs> while we here in Alaska. But this is as low-carb as it gets. Well, yeah, it is a little later now, it is still as windy. Um, and in about an hour, we're gonna get on a on the boat on a cruise for the 26 glaciers. Um, but I just wanted to to take a moment and isn't this like the coolest coolest uh, place? I mean, I'm so glad we decided to come to this campground and unhitch. And uh, we have waterfalls and there's a glacier back there that we can't really see right now. And uh, and I have high hopes for this cruise. We're gonna go on a fjord that is just north of us here. I forget the name and uh, and I, th I think it's gonna be a, a similar glacier experience to what we had uh, a few days ago at, uh, at the Kenai Fjords. And uh, by the way, this is the last major activity, you know, like paid activity, like excursion we're gonna do here in Alaska. Uh, everything else from now on is either gonna be a hike or a scenic drive. All right, let's get ready for our cruise.
This is the closest parking lot, $15 for the whole day, and it seems full except for a few spaces cordoned off. That was until a friendly attendant came over and told us where to park. the marina and our boat, the Klondike Express. Let's check out the inn, if only from the outside. Well, there it is, the iconic inn at Whittier, which unfortunately, apparently there was a flood and, um, and it's closed. Here we have some antennas, our you know, cell phone signal there. And here we have some cool looking boats we're boarding, we're boarding in about uh, 15 minutes, so we have to start heading back. But let me tell you with what a difference a little bit of a better weather day makes because today Whittier looks a lot more picturesque than I did yesterday. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll eat at one of the local establishments after the cruise. All aboard. We have assigned seats, which is good and potentially bad, because we're going to be sitting at a table with strangers, which could go two ways. We could become lifelong friends or not, and be awkward. We'll see. There goes our sister ship, by the way. And off we go. Anchors away. I want to give you a glacier cruise experience today that you will never forget. But first, I'd like to take a few minutes to acquaint you with the safety features on board. The Klondike Express is a luxury catamaran that is capable of reaching speeds upwards of 40 miles per hour or 36 knots. While underway, we encourage you to move about the boat and observe the spectacular scenery from all three decks. Your safety is our primary concern, so please be careful to watch your step. There's the inn, and we must return someday when it is open. There's something you don't notice when you're on land, but those are some incredible waterfalls and ice fields hiding right above the town. The scenery is getting too good, I think it is time to go outside. We are speeding away over the relatively calm waters of Prince William Sound. And I think those are the previously invisible to us Portage and Byron glaciers. That one would be Billings Glacier. I think we're getting off to a great start. At this point in the trip, I have lost count of how many glaciers we've seen, but they're all different and fascinating. Now speeding towards Port Wells and eventually College Fjord. Everywhere you look, no matter which direction, it is a panorama of staggering beauty.
This one is called Cascade Glacier and it does have a little bit of a cascading look to it. Oh, that's an amazing view, even from far away on this somewhat hazy morning, looking into Harriman Fjord, which we're not gonna enter. Not part of the cruise, but we can see the glacier from here. I believe that is Harvard Glacier in the distance, the farthest point we're going to travel to today. Not sure which one that is, but to me it almost looks like a face. We're starting to see ice on the water from Glacier Cabin. That would be Yell Glacier, and since we are in College Fjord, all these glaciers are named after famous universities. Oh, take a look at these two. Oh, now there's four of them. There, once again, Harvard and Yale. It is just one glacier after the other. I mean, no wonder they call it the 26 Glacier Tour. I believe that one is named after Vassar College. This one is quite remarkable, the Bryn Mawr Glacier. It is really two glaciers converging into one. We're getting close to Harvard Glacier now, and this one must be Smith Glacier. Harvard Glacier, by the way, a lot larger than it looks without something to give you a sense of scale. It is the second largest one on the Prince William Sound at 1.5 miles wide and 300 feet thick. That looks like a huge underwater spring. Here we can see the whole toe of the glacier. It is actually quite remarkable. Not a whole lot of cabin happening right now, but I guess you can't have everything. I'm always intrigued at how the toe of the glacier gets all these pointy ice formations. What a great view this is, with all the mountains as backdrop. And there's an iceberg. Watching that separate from the glacier must have been a sight to behold. We're even getting more sunshine. This is so great. 
sister ship is leaving. Check it out, seals, just hanging out on top of the small icebergs. Ice, ice baby, everywhere. They are fishing some of the ice to put on our drinks later. We're gonna start heading back south. We came inside for a little bit so we can have a stiff drink with glacial ice, just picked from the fjord. So on the right side, we can see a little bit of that blow still. Oh, yeah. We're looking for that humpback whale to surface. It's where it's just gonna come above the surface of the water and be visible. Didn't show much of itself, uh, nor did it lift its tail. So we're just gonna hang and hope we get a little bit. Apparently, this humpback whale seems to be asleep, as they do. And when that happens, they don't come up for air as often. We're going to circle around for a few minutes, but I wouldn't get my hopes up for a spectacle like the one we saw at Kinai Fjords. There it is. Yeah, it seems to be a little lethargic. Oh, up off the right side, just about three o'clock. Then it's gone. Again. This one looks like it's a young whale that we've got here. It's a baleen whale, so what it does is it captures all of that water with the food inside in its mouth. We continue. There's still a lot to see in our six-hour cruise. Those massive mountains. Now turning to the east towards Esther Passage, which is this narrow waterway between Esther Island and the mainland. Very lush, like a microclimate. It's even getting cloudier here. What a change of climate and scenery. This part almost looks a little more like Resurrection Bay, if you will. Next up, Eggs Rock, a sea lion rookery. Stiller. 
lines here on deck rocks just on the right side of the ship. These are really cool creatures. Honestly, they're kind of goofy looking. They're lounging out on their backs and their sides. You see, now these are mammals as well. So they can't breathe in the water. They have to hold their breath. Aside from that though, they are incredibly well adapted. As well adapted as they are for the water, they can also move across land surprisingly well. Their back flippers can turn forward, rotate forward, acting like a second pair of limbs. They can sprint across the land at a pretty good clip for a short distance. I don't want to be anywhere near one of these massive stellar sea lions on land with it sprinting towards me. Stellar sea lions use their huge front flippers to propel themselves in the water. They use their smaller rear flippers to steer themselves and act like a rudder. This is in complete contrast to a harbor seal, for example which uses their back flippers to propel themselves through the water and their front flippers for steering. If you're out on the deck, definitely keep your ears open. They can have a really cool roar and growl that you'll probably hear a lot of. It is always great when you get to see curious wildlife like this. And even better when you get a knowledgeable guide to explain it all. Saying goodbye to the sea lions, we're going to cut across to the other side of Port Wells, towards Blackstone Bay. This is what we've done so far. We came out of Passage Canal and sailed all the way to the end of College Fjord. Then Esther Pass, the X Rocks, and now Blackstone Bay. Oh, check that out! That's a huge ice field! There are several glaciers here on Blackstone Bay one of our last stops today. Oh man, I think they were saving the best for last. Incredible glaciers, incredible waterfalls. I mean, is this place even real? That's Blackstone Glacier. I think this is going to be awesome. Here we are, Blackstone Glacier. Look at it, the more beauty you see. This cruise is definitely a must if you happen to be in Whittier, preferably with good weather. Look at all the birds on the cliffside. Enjoyed it.
where you can. Uh, it's only about a five minute ride to get around this point down here and go right next door for a quick look at. Now we're going to the glacier just next to this one. It is called Beloit. This one has a waterfall too, and it is beautiful, but after Blackstone? Anyway, it is hard to compare. Had this been the first glacier we ever saw, I would have said this is the best glacier ever. We are now at the Kitty Wake Bird Rookery, our last stop, so let's go outside again. And there's Whittier. Minitini 4 is somewhere back there, and as we zoom out, what an incredible backdrop. I'm afraid our cruise is coming to an end. This one was definitely worth it. What a great way to wrap up our time here in the Kenai Peninsula. here with the black-legged kitty wake rookery as we start to point our way back towards Whittier here a lot of people live in that building most of the town actually every once in a while you'll see a Facebook article or something making the rounds online and it'll be a little exaggerated it'll say oh the whole town lives in this building and it's not exactly right most of the town does about 80% but not the entire town that's it all good things come to an end let's go back to Minitini because tomorrow we're going north then east, and then back south. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to run the generator for a couple of hours. And uh, by the way, the weather is like perfect right now. And this is the thing, even though it's been kind of sunny, it hasn't been sunny enough besides, it, you know, we're power hugs, Starlink, the refrigerator, two computers, yeah. We're gonna charge it fully and tomorrow we're uh, probably gonna be able to boondock again uh, somewhere near um, Palmer somewhere you know north of, of Anchorage and uh, before we leave Whittier I think uh, I have to say I believe we saved the best for last year I mean this was an outstanding cruise one of the best experiences we've had in Alaska Unimagin unimaginable beauty. I was gonna do a hike to the glacier or somewhere around here, but I don't think we're gonna do it tomorrow. We're leaving. As I said, this was the last major thing we did here, here in Alaska. And uh, I mean, we might do something else from Valdez when we get there, but for now, this is it for today. Let's hit the road tomorrow morning. Well, good morning. Boy, am I glad we did that cruise yesterday and not today. Today, everything is covered in fog. There's a very light mist coming down. But visibility is nearly zero. I mean, we can kind of see the mountain back there, but that's about it. Well, we're gonna 
spend the morning here uh, getting some work done and then we're going towards Palmer maybe even a little farther with a quick stop in, in Anchorage for resupplying we're about an hour from Anchorage and two hours from Palmer about seven hours from from Valdez which is where we're going tomorrow well, I've got the four cameras going just in case you know in the odd chance that the weather might improve but let's face it it's more of a wishful thinking at this point and we've had except except for that first day that we did the, the Alaska tramway we've had a little bit of bad luck with the Seward Highway <laughs> anyway destination Anchorage Palmer on the way to to Valdez and we have to put gas we have like 61 miles left This time I remembered to turn off the lane keep assist beforehand and it is a little better. The weather seems to be a lot better on this side of the mountain. Still overcast, but at least it is not raining. There's a lot more to do in this area. Porter's Glacier, Byron Glacier. But we're gonna save some of that for another time. There's only so much you can do. Now onto a little more familiar territory. We have reached Turnagain Arm. You think we might see a boar tide? There goes the train. Let's refuel here in Girdwood. Busy gas station, but we're running on fumes. I'm glad we have a short trailer. Beluga Point, pretty busy, as usual. It is hard to stop at these busy places while towing, although today we probably could have. We've made it to Anchorage, Alaska's big city. This is going to be our last chance to go to a big city supermarket for a while. About two weeks actually, so let's resupply. Fred Meyer is a chain that I've only seen in Alaska and Oregon, and we really like them. They have a great selection.
On the next episode, we're driving to Valdez. Along the way, we will once again see incredible beauty as we drive through the Chugash Mountains and by Matanuska Glacier once again. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding in my